Hi, I'm Dimitri from XYZ Create, and today I'll be showing you how I built this Bentwood Lamination Guitar. I started off with one of my all-time favorite guitars, the Jackson Kelly. The first thing I needed to do was disassemble it. I'll be using the neck and most of the hardware in the final build. Using a white colored pencil, I traced the outline of the body onto a quarter inch piece of masonite, and then I cut it out with my jigsaw. Things were going pretty smoothly until this happened. I actually broke the base plate completely off of my jigsaw. Luckily, I had a backup jigsaw. Using double stick tape, I could temporarily attach the body to the template. Using a flush trim bit on my makeshift router table, I could route the shape of the body perfectly onto the template. This dollar store double-sided tape I use holds firmly and leaves no residue behind. I left a small nub where the output jack was located on the body as my router won't be able to ride along the edge. It's easy enough to clean it up on my disc and belt sander. Using a razor blade, I clean up any fuzzy spots left behind by the router. I changed the shape of the horn and cut out with my jigsaw, and this is to allow the wood to bend to the shape easier later on. With the template cut and smoothed out to its final shape, I traced it out onto three three-quarter inch sheets of MDF. Using my bandsaw, I cut all three sheets out close to the line but not touching it. I attached the master template to the MDF using screws. After setting the height of the router bit, I could route out the shape of the master template perfectly onto the MDF. After routing, I'm left with three identical pieces of MDF that I can glue together using type on original wood glue, and I'm using screws to clamp them together until the glue dries. I also cleaned up any glue squeeze out. While waiting for the glue to dry on the MDF forms, I can work on creating the template for the body cavities. Using a flush trim bit, I can rat out the neck pocket as well as the pickup cavity. With an eighth inch drill bit, I drilled out the spring through holes. In order to find the position of the bridge post holes, I use the transparency sheet and trace their position relative to the other cavities in the body. With all the cavities cut out of the template, I needed to find a center line. And to do that, I'm finding the center of the neck cavity as well as the string through holes and connecting the dots. After finding center on the cavity template, I lined it up to the outline template and transferred over the lines. After finding center on the outline template, I positioned it on a mahogany body plank, traced it out, and cut it out using my bandsaw. After attaching the outline template to the body plank, I could route the first pass using a pattern bit. I got a bit of chip out at the end of the cut, so I attached two scrap pieces of MDF and that completely eliminated the problem. After the first two passes with a pattern bit, I flipped the piece over and finished up the cut with a flush trim bit. Using a pair of calipers, I can mark out how deep I need to route into the body. After tracing out the position of the cavities, I could move over to my drill press and remove the bulk of the material. Using a router unsupported like this would ruin the depth of the cut. In order to support the router, I'm using two cutoffs that match the thickness of the template and the body. Using a router and a pattern bit, I can route out the pickup cavity and neck pocket.
Over at the drill press, I drilled the string through holes as well as the holes for the bridge posts. Now that the glue was dry, I could remove the screws and sand off any excess glue. I then lined up and traced the body onto the form, and this will act as a guide later on. With the guidelines laid out on the form, I encased the front, back, and sides in a packaging tape cocoon, and this will prevent the veneers from sticking to the form later on. Using an inch Forstner bit chucked up in my drill press, I drilled all the way through around the perimeter of the form, and this is so I can attach the clamps later on. I'll be using skate veneers as the rim of the body, and the first thing I need to do is square them all up. I use these mini spring clamps to hold the veneers together until I can put the tape on. The tape will be holding the veneer straight as well as allowing me to run it through the bandsaw. I'm aiming for a final thickness of 1 and 3 quarters inches, but I measured out to 2 inches to give me some wiggle room in case the veneers don't line up. I also applied a piece of blue painters tape to the underside to reduce any splinters. I then cut out the strips on my bandsaw. Removing the painters tape reveals a clean, splinter-free edge. I repeated the same steps as before until the entire board was cut up into 2 inch long strips. Using the form, I could measure out how long I needed to cut the veneers on my miter saw. Using Type Bond Original Wood Glue, I can apply glue to one face of all the veneers. With the glue applied, I can start to bend and clamp the veneers to the form. And I'm using wood blocks as calls so I don't dent the surface of the veneer with the clamps. I couldn't get any clamps on the very ends of the board, so I use masking tape to act as a clamp and close up any gaps. I was really amazed while working on this to see just how much the veneers can bend without breaking. After letting the glue dry for a full 24 hours, I could remove the veneers from the clamps. And to my surprise, there was virtually no spring back. In order to get the veneers to curve to the upper parts of the body, I needed to soften them up. And to do that, I'm putting them in my hydro flask full of boiling water and letting them soak for 15 minutes. Once the 15 minutes were up, the veneers were ready to bend. With the veneers fully soaked, they bent to the curves without hesitation. And I left them in the form for 24 hours so they can retain the shape. After letting the water fully evaporate out of the upper veneers, I could reattach them to the form, only this time using glue to make it a permanent bond. I had a bit of a tough time getting clamps in this area, so I ended up using twine to make sure that the veneer really hugged the curve. While waiting for the glue to dry, I smoothed out the ends of the mahogany body core. After letting the glue dry for a full 24 hours, I removed these pieces from the clamps. Next up, I needed to get the bottom edge of my veneers flat, and to do that, I'm using my belt sander. With all the bottom edges flat, I laid them out on the form and traced out where I needed to cut the ends.
With the veneers cut to final size, it was finally time to glue them into one continuous rim. When cutting the veneers on the bandsaw, I accidentally cut one a little bit too short, but I fixed it with a couple of shims. In order to give the rim a bit more rigidity, I used an eighth inch drill bit to drill a hole in every single one of the butt joints. Using a pair of bolt cutters, I cut the heads off of several nails. These will act as supports for the rim. I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy, covered the nails in it, and inserted them into the holes. With the wood glue and epoxy fully cured, I could remove the form and test fit the body core. Because I cut the veneers oversized, there's a bit of excess material on the rim that I need to remove to get it to sit flush with the body core. Using a combination of my belt and disc sander, I remove the material down to the line. I had originally planned on using my bands how to do this, however I was worried that the rim could possibly collapse in on itself. Using wood filler, I filled in any small gaps along any of the joints that needed it. It's finally time to glue the body core and the rim together, and to do that I'm using Type On Original Wood Glue. I'm using masking tape to hold everything together, as getting clamps on these curved surfaces would be difficult. In order to reinforce the connection between the rim and the body core, I'm using the same nail and epoxy method as before. With the wood glue and epoxy cured, I can remove the masking tape and smooth out the nail holes. In order to transfer the position of the screws that attach the body and neck, I inserted four sharpened headless nails into the screw holes. I then positioned and pressed the neck into the pocket. This left me with four impressions that I could use at the drill press to drill the holes for the screws. Using a piece of clear acrylic covered in paper transfer tape, I made a small pickguard for the electronics to mount to. Cutting acrylic on a bandsaw like this usually leaves a lot of chip out, so I made sure to stay proud of the line. Using my oscillating spindle sander, I can sand right to the line. Peeling off the paper transfer tape was super satisfying. Over at the drill press, I drilled holes for screws to attach the pickguard to the body, as well as a hole for the volume pot. Using a ridiculously long drill bit, I drilled a hole from the pickup cavity so that the wires can reach the electronics. I also drilled a hole for the ground wire as well as for the output jack. I then enlarged the holes in the back for the spring ferrules. After giving the entire body of the guitar one final sanding with 220 grit sandpaper, it was finally time to start assembling.
Any ideas? I've included some sound clips of the guitar, and I apologize in advance for the less than stellar audio as I was using my camera's built-in microphone. So this project was a ton of work, but in the end, I think it was all worth it. I'm not gonna lie and say it was perfect, but for an experimental proof of concept, I think it turned out amazing. You might've noticed I didn't put any finish on this, and that's because the 2K finish I ordered was delayed in shipping and it wouldn't get here in time for me to make the deadline. So I hope you found something useful in this video, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, check out some of my other videos. That'll do it for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.